Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Nation Building. On our program, we examine the political, social, and moral issues in the leadership of the Bahamas. On our program today, as always, we have a very, very exciting guest for you, and we'll introduce him right after this break. Being awarded a free live phone in the Making A Space campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I used my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good. Oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alive for my new phone. Thanks Alive, my name is Kara Snows, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in Bess. It's the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all of their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Would you like to try our chunk? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow. It's really good. Where do we find it in the store? Right this way. Let me do it. Okay. Thank you. Shuffle. It's been a while, do the shuffle. <laughs> do the shuffle, man. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's this? Junkanoo Juice Medley. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo Juice today. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock. Today, we have a very, very exciting program for you. Uh, we are today, as we do quite often, at least once a quarter, talking to get a spiritual pulse of the country. And we have today, it's my delight to introduce to you a young and dynamic pastor uh, who is wearing two hats today. He is the assistant superintendent of the Bahamas Evangelical Church Association and also acts as Zena Pastor of Freeport Bible Church. And I introduce to the nation Mr. Kyle Maycock. Thank Welcome you. Welcome to Nation Building, Mr. Maycock. Thank you, Mr. Bernard. Thank and you for having me. It's your first time here, Pastor. It is, yes. And um, we, you have a lot of things going on and that impacts Grand Bahama more in particular, but also you serve in a capacity that is uh, influencing and impacting uh, ch your church organization in the country in, yes. so that you serve as assistant superintendent over churches. I yes. believe your superintendent is Beckles? Pastor, uh, yes, Cedric okay. Beckles. Cedric Beckles, who yes. also pastors a church in Grand Bahama. Yes. So, lots to talk about today, and for you Grand Bahamians tune in, I'm sure for you in church circles, uh, you will stay tuned because we'll be putting some tough questions to Pastor Carl, young Pastor Carl Maycock today about some of the recent developments um, going on in his church organization in Freeport, but I uh, want to also give him an opportunity to share his thoughts and vision and ideas. First of all, um, you are a Grand Bahamian? I am, I am a Grand Bahamian. Uh, my dad uh, is from Ragged Island, my mother is from Tarpon Bay, Luther, but I was born and raised in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Absolutely, and 
for, for the record, the church that you now pastor, you were raised in that church. Raised the only church. Well, I, you know, my dad tells me I was christened in the Anglican church, but I, I was raised in uh, Freeport Bible yeah. Church. So, so many church organizations, if I can plug in here, in the country have failed in this regard. Mm -hmm. uh, they have failed miserably in raising up sons of their own soil. And so at least I, I must say in that regard, uh, Freeport Bible seems to have um, given birth to someone who is now leading it. Um, were you a part of the young people's ministry, children's ministry? Uh, absolutely. I, I actually was privileged. And a number of us that are still there, we are products of the children's ministry. Yeah, so we came up through, some of us through nursery, children's ministry, student ministry, college age and career ministry. And now, as an adult, uh, contributed to, to the ministry. So we have a good core that came up through and, the system. And I know that you're under 40. Yes. You, you're, you're still slightly. a young, still, slightly under so 40. Slightly. It sounds like it's close <laughs> to 40. But you're still a young man Yes. Um, in, in ministry. It's unique. Um, don't see, I don't know, you might be able to tell me, I don't know if there is a, a, a person acting as senior pastor anywhere in the country. I'm sure there might be, but not in any of the significant churches that I can recall that is under 40. Is that the case? There are a few, know you know, in, in Grand Bahama, I know there are a few. There's a, a young, younger pastor, a younger um, Pastor Glenn Russell. Um, you know, I, I, there's, there are a few that yeah, may have a, a well, bit smaller risk suffice it to say that there are not many. No, there are not and, many. And for a young developing country, we should have more um, young people in leadership. I make no, I spare no, no effort in promoting that. Mm -hmm. um, you always hear, and the young people say it all the time, that leaders in political circles and spiritual circles talk about the youth, and that you hardly ever see you rising up to true positions of power. So it is commendable. Yes. I want to just talk a little about your, um, your development and your background. Uh, you hold a Bachelor of Arts degree from uh, biblical, in Biblical Studies and Pastoral Ministry from Trinity College in Tampa. Yes. And I noted that you, so you are a trained pastor. You know. Yes, yeah, formally trained. You know, I had the opportunity to, to go off to school at a very early in my 20s. Actually, the church, Free World Bible Church, and the association that I also serve in, they were instrumental in actually funding my education, so my formal education. And so, yeah, I, I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to, to pursue my call and my dream um, formally. So you're not just a product of the ministry in the sense that you had the benefit of growing up in your, the church you now pastor, but you're saying the church actually helped to pay invested, for, yeah, yeah. invested in you. So, so this was, uh, you, you are a protege of, of your late pastor Absol then? Abs absolutely, we have similar, we have similar stories. As a matter of fact, the college I went to is the same Bible college that he studied in. And ironically, the gentleman who now passed away, Mr. Israel Lang, who was his roommate at the time when he was in college, uh, my last two years in college was my roommate. He came. He went back to. He came back to school. And is it? <laughs> is it that your former senior pastor? Um, I hope I don't stir controversy, but I'm just asking along the line of your reasoning. Mm -hmm. Is it that he was deliberate in having you go to this university to be trained, as he was, with an with a with a view to raise you up to take over the church, or did that just happen by accident? Well, I rem I remember I remember early on, you know, I got I gave my life to the Lord at the age of seventeen, and since then I've been involved in church min ministry leadership. And I think it was at the age of nineteen. I remember uh, it was a year that I was really struggling to figure out what God wanted me to do. And um, I kind of said, like, I, I think I got some kind of confirmation. And um, I didn't know how to go about it. It was about three weeks later. The senior pastor at the time, he, he and a group of elders, they came into a young adult meeting, youth meeting we had. And they asked, they actually asked in the circle, um, has anyone feel, felt a call to ministry as a vocation? And I, you know, all the hair on the back of my neck stood up. And I was in a circle, and nobody really put their hand up. But, and I was like, you know, this, this was an opportunity. And I, um, I put my hand up. I told them that this is something that I feel called to, to do. At and what age was that? This was at 19. Mm -hmm. 
which is so a 19 So you were an adult, but a yes. young adult. Yes. So, so you went off, got formal training that you said the church um, partially funded. Yes. Um, you, I noted also that you um, started a, uh, your founder of Generation Next Workshop. Generation Next Workshop. Next Generation. Yes. What is that? It's what an organization that? that provides training for youth pastors, student leaders. Um, youth ministry has been a passion of mine for years. I strive to excel in whatever, wherever I was serving. And I noticed that there was a lack of um, leadership in that area. And we wanted to equip people that were coming into ministry that had a passion for it, provide training, formal training and strategies, research um, for churches that are interested in developing student ministries. And so we started that in 2011, and it, it's currently still going on now. Good. You, you also served as, um, no doubt, uh, a student, a, a pastor in locally, I think you were the, were you the youth pastor, or what was that capacity? That in, you in Freeport Bible Freeport. Church? Right. Yeah, okay. I was the student ministry pastor. Student youth ministry pa pastor. Traditionally, they call it youth, pa youth right. pastor. Right. And, and you also, I noted, served while you were away in school yes. in, in a church in Tampa as well? Yes. What was the position you yeah, served? Yeah, I was a youth director in First Baptist Church of College Hill. Okay. And that has, they have a Bohemian connection, too. They are now led by a former pastor of Freeport Bible Church. Uh, too many coincidences. <laughs> too, too many coincidences. <laughs> you, 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 you are, I also, in looking at your bio, noted that you, you've had some stint in the Family Islands. You've yes. been to Inagua or Biguana. Yes, yes, both. Served in both. Yeah, I graduated in 2006, and upon graduation, you know, Pastor Auden saw it fit that I do an intern, an internship. And uh, he sent me to Mayaguana, Pirates, Pirates, Pirates Bell, Mayaguana, Berea Mission Church. Um, I spent a few small months church, there. Yeah, very, very small, small church. church. Yeah. But, but it was a very good experience. There? About five months. It was a summer, summer stint. Uh, I had to go back to school to kind of walk, to, to, to walk for graduation. And then once I did my graduation, I came back to Freeport. And uh, he dispatched me to Mayaguana, to Inagua. Matthew Down in Agua at Inagua Gospel Chapel under uh, Reverend Carl Farkerson that passed away. And I was supposed to have been there for about six weeks. I stayed two years. Two years? Two years, What yes. made you, a young man, having a desire to be in ministry? First of all, it's, it's hard to find young, bright young people to get involved in ministry these days. Um, some argue that's the reason why so many of the senior leaders are sticking around. Whether that's true or not, that's another mm -hmm. discussion. But what made you, when most young people your age, having the opportunity to go and get a college degree, is going off making money and doing exciting things in life, what made you um, choose ministry and then go to places such as Iago? I don't, I don't know if I chose ministry as much as ministry chose me. It's, it's a calling. I feel it's a calling. Um, but I was privileged to know very early what I believe my life mission was. I was settled on what uh, was going to give me the most fulfillment in life. And I knew that my purpose in life was to provoke people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe that the, the primary platform that, uh, you know, that was given to me is the church, the local church. And I knew that. I knew that early. And it was a love. It was a passion for me. And I wanted to be the best at it. I wanted to get as much exposure. I wanted to sit. I wanted to suffer. <laughs> I wanted to understand to people. To suffer? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know, I wanted to know what it was like to, to, to really serve. And, um, and those, those are the formative years of, in my ministry. You know, I had an excellent experience in Tampa. It was a very large church, one of the oldest um, African-American, largest African-American churches in Tampa at the time. Um, then going to Mayaguana, I was in Mayaguana Pirates. I loved the people. Um, but it was, you know, it was a senior, senior citizen uh, congregation, yeah. You had 70-year-olds or 10-year-olds, and that was the gap. Mm -hmm. And then in, in, in Inagua, was different. A, a whole lot of young people. Um, it, was, it was a surprise. And so, but I, I wanted to go because I wanted to learn. I so you to. have a passion for ministry. I, I have a passion for ministry. You're watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we'll be right back with Ka Pastor Kyle Maycock in a short minute. Being awarded a free live phone in the Making A's Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. 
I use my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good. Oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Ally from my new phone. Thanks Ally, my name is Kara Snowles, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in best. the market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahama product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. Hi, I'm Debbie Barton from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and I'm here today. Uh, we're talking, um, talking about spiritual impact on the country. We're talking to a pastor, a young pastor, um, who is young and dynamic, but also in the midst of a challenging situation, which we're going to get to shortly, um, who's leading a, a dynamic church in Freeport, Grand Bahama that has had a tremendous impact on that community for decades. And so we're going to be finding out a little more about this young pastor and his, the, his leadership in that community and more particularly in his church, his church organization and where they go after some challenges they had recently. Let's talk a little, Pastor Kyle Maycock, about the history of Freeport Bible Church. Mm -hmm. You have inherited a church that you didn't have to build. Mm -hmm. You, unlike many pastors who have journeyed their life building a ministry, you have, some might say, some things fell into your lap. I don't know how you want to term that, but you have inherited a ministry that is, uh, has moved on to build a significant edifice. Um, significant membership uh, prior to a recent split. Um, you've, uh, it has a preschool, a primary school, preschool, I believe. Preschool, primary school. Pre yes. and primary school. Uh, so you have a significant organization to lead. Mm -hmm. And um, people would wonder, with your youth and some would say inexperience, how do you move from the history of the church to the future, and we're gonna dive into that, but mm -hmm. talk about more specifically about when was Freeport Bible started and by who? Uh, Freeport Bible Church, uh, well this, this year, this month, September, we celebrate 42 years of ministry. It was started by uh, Reverend Ed Gadet. Uh, he planted the church um, 42 years ago. Is he still alive? He's still alive. He's here now, so he's he's um he's had some physical challenges. He had a stroke some number a number of years ago. His wife Mary is is is, is a primary caretaker's family, but he's he's still alive. But he planted he planted Freeport Bible Church 42 years ago. Um, he was the first pastor, 
Uh, shortly after him, um, uh, Pastor Mamlam came and, and spent a few years. Was he a Bahamian? No, he was a foreigner. He was a foreigner. And he spent, he spent about two years as the pastor. And then uh, uh, the former senior pastor, Pastor uh, Will Bowden, um, he, he was appointed uh, a little over 33 years ago. And uh, he served until his, um, his passing uh, in January 2017. And so the church has been around, like, it's, like we said, for 42 years, providing ministry. We've had uh, four locations. <laughs> we started off uh, in, in 76 at Jobson Avenue in, in an apartment, uh, then the YMCA, and then um, you know, we just kind of moved around until we, we found our home. Uh, our camp, both campuses, they are on West Atlantic and Norma Headley Drive. And so that has been the, in the summary, the history of, of Freeport so Bible the, Church. So the journey of Freeport Bible Church, to be sure, is not a, a recent one. It's 42 years is a long time. Yes. It's literally um, almost as old as the country Gen itself. A generation, yeah. Right, it's a generation. Um, are you familiar with any significant challenges or splits or major issues in leadership during the early days of the church? Of course, you weren't around, but mm -hmm. you should know the history of the church. Yeah, the, you be, like every church, <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, we have people problems. Every church has a people problem full of people. And we've had, um, we've had a split a little over 30. As a matter of fact, there was a split prior to uh, Pastor Will Bowden's, or re right after Pastor Will Bowden's appointment. And so, you know, we don't always call it a split, you know, but sometimes people just move on. Right. Uh, so th at, just to be clear, at that point when Pastor Outen took over, the, the, it, he was a young man. I don't know, he was, was 30, he younger he, than you? He was 33 years old. So he was even younger than you? Even younger than I was. And so I, I, it, was it that there were some in, in the organization that wanted somebody older, or was it a different kind of a... Well, I, I wasn't there. That was long before my time, but... Mm -hmm. but I, I assume I assume that there, there, was there, some preferences. there preferences. were preferences. There were preferences. I don't think it was which always existed yeah. in, in organizations, and the church yeah. is, is obviously no different. Passed out and led Freeport Bible Church for, I would surmise around what thirty years over or 30, close to yes, that. Over thirty years. Yes. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, left a great legacy in the community. He was definitely a significant figure as a spiritual leader. I think leaders of if not all, most of the political organizations in the country, I think from Sir Linden, would have either consulted him or who have interactions, significant interactions with him as a result of his impact in the Grand Bahama community. I myself am minded of a grouping that he had some years ago, uh, I don't remember if the name was a pastor's council or whatever, that sought pastor's to take forum. up a forum yeah. that took up social issues in the community yes. and brought leaders together from several different uh, church, which I thought was commendable in an era when churches and their leaders don't seem to be getting along, but he, he certainly seemed to have been um, a figure that was able to do that. So having, having we, we have to just quickly find out from you um, how the baton was passed from uh, Pastor Outen to you um, in terms of, I know he passed away, he, he was sick and eventually, uh, unfortunately, um, passed away uh, last year, January, you January, said? January, okay. So how, how, was, how has been that transition? We now you, are not, you are now the pastor, but in summary, how does that transition go? Well, it was not a smooth transition. Um, if you didn't know, you know, Pastor Auden, um, a few years ago, was diagnosed with, with ALS, and, um, and it, it, really, it really took a toll on he and his family uh, rapidly. And so his, his demise... And for our viewers, what is ALS? It's, uh, it's a nerve... Uh, neuro, degenerating? Neurological, yes, a mm. degenerating disease uh, physically. But your mind is sharp, but your body just really, really deteriorates. And it happened rapidly, and it was very difficult for his family and, and very difficult for us as a church. And especially family. his wife? Uh, especially Barbara his was. wife and children, Tanya and Troy. And so and it's very difficult for us. Um, so there was, he did not officially tr pass a baton. Uh, a process was started. He understood um, that, you know, the reality was he might not have been coming back from his situation. And, um, and, you know, years prior to that, he was a visionary. One of the things, that was one of his strong suits as a leader. And he began to put in place something that would outlive him. 
uh, you know, something that would uh, continue to protect the legacy and move on. And, um, and so um, with his demise came, you know, without it being final or clear, um, it, it brought a lot of confusion. Um, a lot of things were left open to interpretation. And, and we have some good leaders. We had some good leaders. We have some good leaders that um, tried their best to try and navigate through it. And, um, and so uh, it didn't go as smooth. <laughs> and I've learned that these things never go as, they, as, they, as you see them going in your mind. But it was not a, it was not a, it was not a, a smooth transition. Uh, but nonetheless, a transition happened, and, and this, is, this is where I am. I, I suspect, I'm just listening to you, that you don't want to share too much, but you, you, you I think, owe it to those who uh, may follow you or mm -hmm. have an interest in, at the very least, um, sharing a little more about you are now the leader of the church. You, you, you weren't the leader of the church. Um, it, what you said that it wasn't a smooth transition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the churches in the country, there's, it's no secret. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate, but no secret mm -hmm. that churches around the country, uh, in our country, has had endless problems. And you mm -hmm. said it's a people problem. Well, you, you got, in, in fact, you, you, just like in political organizations where there is a, a, a rush to, for leadership position, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it seems that the same happened in, in the church. It, 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 some of us think it shouldn't be mm -hmm. because you're dealing with a spiritual organization where people like yourselves claim to, to have a spiritual relationship with the divine creator. Mm -hmm. You'd want to think that an, an organization led by a spiritual leader would, would follow the guides of the Bible. Mm -hmm. what, what though, uh, in addition to my question of wanting a little more meat on the bones, mm -hmm. what is the fundamental problem with churches in the country with these splits, I call them, and issues where you find leaders can't, is it just basically a, a power graph? What is no, it? No, I don't, I, I don't always think it's always, every church is different. Uh, it's just, a church is as complex as its people. Um, I think the, I, I guess the principle really is, it's the same as in, if in a family, if, a, if a, the primary breadwinner is passing away, they don't leave a, a will or they don't leave clear instructions on what is supposed to happen. And, and if something happens suddenly, then it's always a, uh, there's always a scamper for you know, what happens next. And so I think proper succession planning in, in churches, clear succession planning, I think that's lacking um, in most Christian organizations. And, and would you accept, um, on behalf of your former leader, your late pastor, which the community has tremendous respect and regard for, so we don't want to take any away from his legacy, but wouldn't you accept that there might have been some failings in that regard because you are confessing today that if the church has proper planning and transition, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have these challenges. Yeah, and I, you know, I think um, in, in the process of getting healthy, I, think, I know that years before, even before his diagnosis, that it was something that was being put in place. Uh, now, nobody knows when the hourglass is, is going to, or when the timer is up. And, um, and I think that's the unfortunate thing. I think the lesson that you learn is that you just, we should take away from it, is that you just never know. And so whatever you- You always should be ready. You always should be, be ready. And I, and I know, I, what I do know is that we were in the process of getting healthy in this area and getting clear in this area, um, especially at the time of his- of So his what demise. went wrong, Pastor? Well, what went wrong was that there was no clarity. There was no clarity. Um, there was no documentation. Clear. Um, Don't you have a board of elders that govern? Yeah, your we have a we have a board. Of, we have a board of elders, and that is um, and that's really what happened. That's really what happened. It was entrusted. The process was entrusted to a, a group of men um, to lead through this process. In addition to, we have a superintendent that governs the. He's, we, you know, Free World Bible Church is not an independent church. Okay. It's a church it's of the... It's a part of an organization. It's a part of an organization. organization. Yeah, and whenever there's a vacancy in the pastoral, in the pastorate, the, um, the executive board, the superintendent, um, has, has the authority to step in to kind of navigate through any difficult issues. And so what happened really is that's uh, at Pastor Auden's demise, um, the association stepped in and put in place what was already pending what had already been started um, by Pastor Auden to, and entrusted to a group of men to see it through. And along the way, um, I think there was a difference in philosophy among a group, some groups of people. And, um, 
And, uh, and, and that really, that, if I could summarize it, that's what happened. There was a difference of philosophy in direction of, of what should happen. And instead of, uh, instead of breaking up the place in the sense where, you know, of course you had your, your tension, but instead of really dragging it out, you know, some people, we had some decisions made to just kind of amicably part ways. Part ways. And, you know, um, the, the tough part of these things is, is always relational. Um, you know, but I think in time, and, and when we all sober down, you know, it was no scandal. It was no scandal. Um, it was no scandal or anything like that. It was just, um, just a, uh, and losing a pastor, losing a pastor suddenly, the, the traumatic effect on, on, the, sh on the family and then the, the, sh the sheep that he's shepherding, and then the scamper to just get organized and to remain, remain fortified. Um, I, I think we underestimated the, the impact that that would have had psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually on, on us as leaders. And, um, and so at the end of the day, there was just a difference of opinion, a difference of philosophy. Um, well, well, so. le well let, me, let me do this, and I won't ride this horse to death, but I, I think I would do um, people in Grand Bahama who have an interest here, an injustice, if I didn't put this to you, and then it's up to you to how you respond. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some in the community who feel that your board of elders and yourself and the young Turk of the organization mm -hmm. um, simply wanted the, the, the other, I uh, don't want to mistitle him, but mm -hmm. the other pastor that served in a similar leadership capacity as you did under your previous pastor, mm -hmm. he, I guess he was senior and then you had yeah, two, two absolutely, other pastors, absolutely. right? Yeah. That, 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 that yourself, uh, I guess a representative of the young Turk, simply wanted to move out the old guard. And um, so you guys basically overthrew the, <laughs> the, the senior pastor who had served in a capacity for over 20 years. And so word on the street is that he was not handled well. Well, you know, what is, what you know word you? on the street is, the word, on, well, the word on the street is, is sometimes is, is not accurate. You know, I would always say in this whole process, Maximum six people sat up in a room making decisions. And so um, anyone outside of that room, any information would really be, you know, second-hand information. And, you know, so, um, but that's not the case. That, that, is, that is not the case. There was no overthrow. There was a process. Um, there was a process in place, and the process was followed. followed. If, if for clarity, I've, mm -hmm. I've alleged on behalf of many who have this view, uh, that there was an overthrow or a mm -hmm. grouping of, that didn't want um, the, 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 the other pastor to be involved. Um, so for clarity, um, seeing that you said there, there wasn't, um, would you mind simply telling us a little if this process was in fact a clean process and was not mm -hmm. in any way uh, to muddied, can you tell us what, in simple, what that process was? The process, the process was that um, the a Board of Elders was entrusted with the process of, of nominating a, a name to send forward to the Executive Board of the BECA, the superintendent, basically. And once the BECA or the superintendent has no problem with the name, then that name would go to the people uh, for a confirmation vote. And in order to get the senior pastor position, you had to secure 75% of the voting, of the voting um, population. Um, that was the process, and that's what happened. Um, my name as a, well, we had an interim period where, where we had a, the former pastor. He served as the, the leader for 11, 12 months, or 13 months. And he, um, you know, he served. And at the end of the process, we needed to produce a senior pastor. And so the elders, the board of elders, um, put forward, uh, we had two candidates. Um, one candidate was able to get beyond the first phase and the second phase and get to the people, which was myself, but did not secure 75% of the voting election. Of the, of of the, the church, of the, of church. the population the, yeah, of the church. The quarter that you would have to secure. Mm -hmm. uh, the, other, the other candidate just couldn't get the, the nomination, couldn't get nomination. So, so in, in effect, you, 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 you had, an up, uh, you, you said your, your church's policy or, or its constitution provided mm -hmm. that this, the, choi the process of selecting a pastor goes through the elders first and then to the general 
the, the church. No, the, the elders, the associate executive board and association, and then that name is forwarded to the people for confirmation. For final confirmation. For and if the people, do, if in, the, in the majority, and there's some who say that voting has no place, by the way, in a spiritual I, organization. You know, sometimes but, I agree. <laughs> but but uh, so the, the process was, just to be clear, that you pass most of the steps but fail to get the majority support. The, the 75%. And then the other pastor who shared serving in the ministry with you was not able to get past the elders, which is the first step. Which is the first step. And I guess that is where the accusation occurred, yeah, which yeah. is that there is a grouping or Turk, young Turk. Is your elder board made up of mainly young people like yourselves? No, no, uh, no. My elder board is made up of senior men who've been elders at the church for at least a dozen years. So you're suggesting that the senior men preferred you in, in terms of their well, choice of a well, leader? Well, you know, in the, in, the, in the process of, of nominating the name, there were some things that, you know, people were, they were considering. And they, there's a, there are reasons why um, um, they would have sent my name forward. Um, reasons I'm sure you don't want to, I, I, no, I sound, no, it no, seems no, like you don't not, And, and like, I, like I, I repeat, you know, there's nothing scandalous. There was, there was no scandal. Um, there was no scandal. And, and, and that's just the way the process, that's just the way the process, so, 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 unless, so, unless an elder says, and you know, one of these guys come out and say that this is a malicious thing. You, you, you can't judge okay. unless you so, can So just to be clear, so we, we don't dwell on this any further. To be clear, you're alleging, and you're saying rather, that a, the process that is that governs your church organization was followed. Absolutely. And you're being chosen um, by the process, except that you didn't get a majority. But of let me let me be very clear. I am not at this point the sitting senior pastor. You're acting. The permit. I am an interim. I have a. I was appointed an interim six month interim position. Okay. We still do not have a permanent sitting senior pastor. So you're going to go through another process of voting? There's again? a process that we have to follow, and, and, and we've committed to that process. We, okay. we we're not going to circumvent the process. So, so, so just to be clear, the process was followed to where it is now, yes. and you believe that your organization is still doing the right thing in terms of I wouldn't upholding? Have it any, I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, just, just, just wanted to, to, to make sure. Yeah. Um, Pastor Kyle, there is a lot that we want to talk about mm -hmm. in focusing on the future of your organization. You stated that um, you are interim, and so we want to, I, I, I make this presumption uh, that you still, even though you have not been confirmed yet mm -hmm. as a senior pastor, I take it that you are laying out a vision and a plan for the ministry, e even if you're not ultimately the senior pastor at yeah, the end of you the know, year? Yeah, uh, you know, we have also, in, in this process, we also had a paradigm shift in, in, in the governing model of the church. And so it's new for everybody as far as who, you, you know, we have a board of elders now that, that we make, and I'm a chair, at, at, the, at this time I'm the interim chairman of the board. And so now we make decisions in concert uh, with more consultation. Uh, with a layer of protection, and so that's new for us, and so we have to work out, and we've been having to work through that process. That's a, it's a new model, and so early on, um, what we have been doing is really trying to get healthy at, at every level of our organization, and that is what we've been prioritizing. Um, that is some of the things that we've been put a, a, at the very top of our agenda, and so that's what we've been dealing with, and while I am occupying the seat, I lead um, according to where I believe the Lord is, 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 is giving me. One of the responsibilities of the chair, whether it be in interim or long term, is responsible for casting the vision and the direction of the church. And so that is what, um, what I've been and, doing. And, and we're going to get into that vision. We're, we're, we're way up on a break. Um, you're mm -hmm. watching Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we'll be right back right after these messages. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Hi, would you like to try our chocolate? I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way, let me do it. Okay, thank you.
Jamaica Bahama Imports always got it. Come on down and get your junk and juice today. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't wanna win. awarded a free live phone in the Making A's Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I used my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good, oh my gosh, there was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alai for my new phone. Thanks Alai, my name is Kara Snowles, owner of the Balloon Princess and I believe in best. Welcome back to Nation Building. I'm your host, Winston Pinnock, and we are here with Pastor Kyle Maycock, who is acting as a senior pastor for Freeport Bible Church, a significant dynamic ministry out of Freeport, Grand Bahama. Pastor Kyle, in this final segment, wanted you to share, as, you, as we are getting ready to close the last segment, you talked about, though at this stage you are the interim acting senior pastor, you, uh, your responsibility still uh, requires of you to, to have a vision and to create a vision for the future of the, of the church. And so for the benefit of those who um, are part of your ministry, those who may be considering, and just for the nation in general, uh, share with us as a young pastor uh, what is your vision for the city, the community of Grand Bahama, and your church? Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, you. You know, one of the things I have a, I've been privileged to, have been exposed to some great, great leaders, Christian leaders in the in the country and abroad. And the unique thing about Free World Bible Church is that its vision that we have now, which is to love God, love people, and serve the world, is extremely simplistic, but it's profound. And my responsibility now is to build on what was already established. We've always had a, a reputation of being a community-centered ministry where we want to impact families, impact lives. And that is exactly, um, we're going to take it to the next level. But in, a, in addition to some of the things that we are going to do, um, traditionally in church um, circles, the very little strategic planning goes into to, um into outreach, into to making an impact. A lot of that stuff is left up to the spirit. I mean, and I, I don't want to say it in a derogatory way, but I believe that we are at a time where God demands a little bit more um, intellect, uh, a little intentionality. And when we plan and, and 
decide that we want to, we have a product in my word that we believe that the community needs, that the world needs, then I believe that we ought to put our best foot forward. And so on our strategic, we, we put a strategic planning committee together. Um, we know, we've identified a target audience in our city. Uh, we know who they are, we know where they are, we know what they like. And so in those sessions, uh, in those planning sessions, data has a place around the table. It doesn't only, it doesn't, own, it's not the only thing. But we, we're very intentional on who we're trying to reach. We know that the largest unchurched um, population in the city are those that fall into the ages of 21 and 40. And those are the people we want. We want to frame our ministry to attract, to inspire, and to reach out it, to those it, people. Is it a matter of being strategic, Pastor, just to reach people and build a big church? Not at all. Uh, like many churches are uh, accused or, uh, of doing, or uh, this audience, what is the purpose? Why reach that group? Well, we believe, again, we believe that, I believe that the church is the, is the hope of the world. I believe that based on the dynamics of where we are as a country, that, you know, the gospel has a, a place in the life. It's a transformative element in the life of everybody. Um, we have people that are, we have families that have been reunited because of the power of the gospel. We've had lives transformed because of the power of the gospel. We believe that it's potent. We believe it's important. We believe it's relevant. And so the why, the why is really because God loves these people because he loves us. We, we're not absent from the people we're trying to reach. We're part of them. But one would say, why not reach uh, the ones over 40? I mean, outside well, of the, that narrow um, spectrum that you've well, articulated. The reality is, uh, one of the things Jesus said very clearly, he says, I came, they asked him, well, why are you here? He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. And so he prioritized. He prioritized coming to reach people um, that were lost. He said, it's, it's, not the, the, it's not the healthy that needs a physician, it's the sick. And so we but, but just to be clear, not mm -hmm. to interrupt you too much, but just mm -hmm. to be clear, you have articulated a age group, and I'm just mm -hmm. simply saying that age why group, narrow to just that age well, group? Well, we believe that that age group, need, we have to, the church needs to have an impact on that age group. And we've seen a decline in the, the effectiveness of the church to attract, to infiltrate, to inspire that age group. Um, so you're talking about the church in broad. The so church in broad, not, not so, specifically. Okay. Not so your studies show that that age group is, the church is not effective in reaching. In reaching those. Okay. And okay. We, want to, we, we want to reach. We salivate for, the, for that group. That's very important. I, yes. I, I, I have to do, I have to ask because it's important to understand. I mean, the church today is being accused of so many crazy yeah. stuff. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. it, there's not, not without merit yeah. in, in many instances. And so want to see what your generation of leadership looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the luxury of seeing it rolled out before us today, but certainly you can share with us, share with the viewers, what it is that you have in mind. So outside of targeting a particular grouping of individuals that you think is not being impacted or reached by the church in your community, your vision seems to be very broad. Uh, many churches, ministries talk about reaching the world when the Bahamas seems to be going to hell, many say. So mm -hmm. the question then is, as a follow-up, is how are you planning to, especially a grouping that I haven't heard you mention, is uh, men. Uh, mm -hmm. th th there's a, there's a, a gap in the male leadership. There's a deficit in male mm -hmm. leadership in, mm -hmm. in the country as a whole, and I'm sure it's the same in your community. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is there a plan? One, to absolutely. We want to, prom first of all, we want to promote male leadership. That is one of the, we want to target. In that, in that demographic, we have a specific target on men. We know where they are. We know what they want. We know what are their challenges. And we are framing our ministries. We're framing our language. We're creating a culture, again, to attract them, to infiltrate where they are. Um, some of the, we don't always, um, our philosophy is not always event driven, but we try to, we have this philosophy called invite and invest and invite. And we believe that people reach people. And the people that we've been entrusted to, our leaders, our congregants, our members, we, we want them to buy into a philosophy that they are influencers, that they are influencers. And the greatest influence you can have on somebody is in the context of a relationship that you already have. Um, our language is not to condemn men. Um, one of the things that we got back from men is that they feel that the church is too condemning. Um, we very rarely do we celebrate men. Uh, we, we celebrate Mother's Day. 
Mother's Day in the church is a big day. Father's Day is, is, is you know, less than. But we want to promote male leadership. We want to strategically, from our, we have a preschool, we have a primary school. These are the philosophies, these are the, the, the values that we want to begin to instill in the people that God has entrusted to us from a very early age. So we want to attract those that are there now, but we also want to build, we want to build something else. And so that, that, is, one of, that is one of the ways that we, we want to do it. Uh, we have community partnerships that address things that are important to men men's empowerment, the, um, issues in the political arena, um, health, um, family, um, when it comes to family, family challenges. But you talk, you talk a great talk about doing these things. How is it practically hitting the ground? Well, what we are, and what we are doing is we've already identified and mobilized men that have a passion for other men. That's one. We formulated or we formed uh, a group of men, a men's ministry, that have embraced this idea that let's start by reaching one person. Our content, we do small groups in our church. We're not a church with small groups, we're a church of small groups. And we want, and that's in line with our philosophy of relationships. We want to get people, we, we don't believe that people grow in rows, we believe they grow in circles. And so the same concept that um, happens at the bar, around the domino table, that is the, that is the philosophy, that is the, the strategy that we're, we're going to use. And so in addition to that, Partnering with those that, are, uh, that share an interest, uh, community leaders, organizations, we want to invest in things that are going to speak to the issues that, um, that really, really trouble men. And again, that's, that's money management, that's family, that's health, that's um, issues in the political um, arena, that's uh, empowerment. Uh, and then there's also children's ministry, you know. Um, family and children's ministry. We care about our children. We, we, whether we call them um, bad men or not, they, we, I'm, a, I'm a father. I care about my, what happens to my children. And if we believe that we provide ministry um, to the family and to the things that, uh, that get the attention of the men, we believe that we can, we can reach them. As I have several more questions for you, which mean I'll have to have you back at some point in the near future. But let me ask you this in closing. Mm -hmm. How is your vision any different from that of your predecessor? It's not, it's not, the, the vision is not different. It's not different. Like I said, I'm building, we're, build, we're building on something that's there. Um, right now, we have an opportunity to, to take it to the next level, uh, meaning that we have a legacy, we have a reputation, we have a, we have a measure of confidence in the city, and our job is to continue to maintain that and then to build on some of the relationships and the legacy that has been left behind us. Um, there are no, there's, there's, we, we aren't in reinventing the wheel. We're just going to get better at what we've, what we've been doing. Is there any concern on your part that in light of what has happened recently, that there might be a weakening or a, is, is, are you challenged in any way by, as you call, call it, parting of ways? From some of your, your no, I, I don't I don't think so. I think like I said earlier, there's there's no there's no scandal here, there's no scandal here, and I know it's 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 uh, whatever is on the streets is green leafish, but there's no scandal here. And I think in time, um, one of the thing one of the greatest testimonies that can can come out of this is not the fact that we fight or we have differences of opinions, is eventually as time goes on, are we able to reconcile, and 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 if people are watching the fight. Then, what, then they should be watching the reconciliation. And I believe that if at, at any time, and I don't think it's that bad, but we are able to come together, we're able to work together, we, we have a relationship um, with those that have moved on, and they express that they have not moved on in any malice. And the Lord has led them in a different direction, and that's, that's what was communicated, and that's, we have no reason to doubt that. And so, although there may be noise in the market or distractions, as time goes on and, and, we, and we invest in the city that God has entrusted us um, with, we invest in the people that God has... has uh, are you, I, you provoke me to ask quickly. I, mean, mm -hmm. I know we run out of time, but are you willing at some point, if the opportunity presents, to work with even the, your former co-leader to, to make a, to impact we, your community? He's not even our co former co Beyond the co-leader, they are our brothers and sisters. So that's, you know, there's no, uh, the professional side of things is professional, but the, the relationship is there. 
And so there's no, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, there's no scandal. I, you know, oftentimes the people on the outside are more invested in this thing than the people that are on the inside. And so there's no. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for thank appearing you. on our program today. On behalf of all of us here at Nation Building, it's been a great pleasure for us to bring you this broadcast. Stay tuned for the next edition of Nation Building when we'll bring you another exciting education and informative program for you, the viewing audience. Have a blessed week, as always. Being awarded a free live phone in the Making Ace Pace campaign last year was one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me. I use my phone to play games, chat with friends over the summer break, and watch YouTube videos. Then I got an idea to start my own balloon business. Being able to use my own phone to start up my balloon business was so important to me. I used my phone to research prices and learn how to do balloon designs that I currently offer to my customers today. The internet speed was so good. Oh my gosh. There was no buffering and the videos were very clear. I am so grateful to Alive for my new phone. Thanks Alive. My name is Kara Snows, owner of the Balloon Princess, and I believe in Bess. Like to try our chunk. I only come in here for two hours. Okay, but it'll only take one second and it's so delicious. Just just one second. Yeah, everything tastes delicious. Wow, it's really good. Where do I find it in the store? Right this way. Let me do it. Okay. Thank you. Wait, I'm glad to see you. Do the shuffle. Shuffle. It's been a while to do the shuffle. Oh, yeah, do the shuffle. <laughs> you know what? You need this. What's that? Junkanoo this? Juice Medley. That's it, that's it, that's it. Give me some more, give me some more. Come on, yeah, that's it. Jamaica Bahama Imports. Always got it. Come on down and get your Junkanoo Juice today. The market for the entire family. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Bahamian owned and operated, Sawyer's is known for the lowest prices on meats, produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Check them out on Facebook and the Freeport News to find out all their weekly specials and their monthly blowout sales. Sawyer's Fresh Market. Your grocery bill just got lower. said you can't get great quality products at an affordable price. If you want the best quality food products at the most affordable prices, you must pick up the Jamaica Bahama brand of fine quality products at your favorite food store. Products like Jamaica Bahama Coconut Water, the most healthy and refreshing drink on the market. Jamaica Bahama Fruit Punch, the only fruit punch in the Bahamas made from real fruit. Jamaica Bahama Coconut Milk, Green Pigeon Peas with Coconut Milk, Condensed Milk, Kidney Beans with Coconut Milk, Corned Beef, Green Pigeon Peas, Mackerel, and Corn. Jamaica Bahama's fine line of products is available at all your favorite food stores and convenience stores nationwide. Telephone 351-8282 in Freeport and 341-4091 in Nassau. I don't wanna win. Hello, I'm Wendell Jones, and every time I sit down and I watch JCN television, I drink the Jamaica Bahama food juice. It's so pleasing to the palate. I've been cooking Bahamian dishes for generations. I now use Jamaica Bahamas product. The rice is very fluffy, very tasty, and good eating. Jamaica Bahama product is simply the best. As an insurance agent, my life is go, go, go. But whenever I need a refreshing break, it's Jamaica Bahamas Island Mixed Fruit Drink. Mmm, good. 
Hi, I'm Debbie Bartlett from GEMS 105.9 FM. The effect that Island Junkanoo Juice Medley has on me is <laughs> exhilarating. <laughs>